Our journey begins in the vast desert of Egypt, where the Great Pyramid of Giza has stood for millennia. A marvel of ancient engineering, this pyramid was built over 4,500 years ago and has withstood the test of time, unlike its six counterparts. Constructed as a tomb for the Pharaoh Khufu, it is estimated that it took approximately 20 years and thousands of skilled laborers to complete. The pyramid, originally standing at a staggering height of 481 feet, was the tallest man-made structure for over 38 centuries. The Great Pyramid, with its precise alignment and intricate internal chambers, reflects the ancient Egyptians' profound knowledge of mathematics, astronomy, and architecture. It is a monument that truly embodies the spirit of its creators, ambitious, resilient, and innovative. This grandiose monument, a testament to the ancient Egyptians' engineering genius, continues to mystify and fascinate us today. We now traverse to the legendary city of Babylon, where the Hanging Gardens once flourished. Picture a paradise teeming with vibrant flora, waterfalls cascading down terrace steps, all erected in the heart of a desert. This was the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, an oasis of tranquility amidst the unforgiving Mesopotamian desert. The story goes that King Nebuchadnezzar II, in an act of supreme devotion, constructed these gardens to soothe his queen's homesickness for her verdant homeland. However, despite its fame, no archaeological evidence conclusively points to its existence. This shroud of mystery only adds to the garden's allure. The gardens, if they existed, were a testament to the advanced engineering of the time. They would have required a sophisticated irrigation system to transport water from the Euphrates River to the top of the terraces. This green spectacle, a testament to Mesopotamian innovation, is a testament to the enduring allure of nature. Such is the enchantment of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, a marvel that continues to captivate and inspire. Our journey now takes us to ancient Greece, where the statue of Zeus at Olympia embodied divine power. This was no ordinary statue. Conceived by the celebrated sculptor Phidias, it stood a staggering 40 feet tall, made from ivory and gold panels over a wooden framework. Zeus sat majestically on his throne, his skin of gleaming ivory, robes of hammered gold, holding a figure of Nike, the goddess of victory, in his right hand and a scepter studded with gems in his left. The statue was housed in a temple, and it was so tall that contemporary writers claimed that if Zeus were to stand, he would unroof the temple. Its grandeur was such that it was considered an embodiment of the Olympic gods themselves. This colossal masterpiece, though lost to time, continues to symbolize the grandeur of the Olympic gods. We now venture to Ephesus, where the Temple of Artemis once stood in all its splendor. This grand temple, twice as large as the Parthenon, was a testament to the awe-inspiring might of Artemis, the Greek goddess of the hunt, wilderness, and childbirth. It was more than just an architectural masterpiece. It was a sacred place, a beacon of religious devotion. Built by the ancient Greeks in the 6th century BC, the temple was adorned with over 100 intricately carved columns, each standing nearly 60 feet tall. It was renowned for its imposing size and exquisite craftsmanship, inspiring awe and reverence in all who beheld it. This architectural marvel was not just a monument, but a living testament to the deep religious devotion of the ancient Greeks. It was a place where they could connect with their gods, seek their blessings, and make their offerings. This architectural marvel, dedicated to the goddess of the hunt, continues to inspire with its exquisite beauty. Our journey leads us to Halicarnassus, where the mausoleum was a tribute to Mausolus, a Persian satrap. This monumental tomb, erected in the 4th century BC, was so magnificent that it gave birth to the term mausoleum. Constructed by skilled Greek architects and adorned with sculptures by renowned artists of the time, the mausoleum stood about 140 feet tall. It was a fusion of various architectural styles, reflecting the diverse cultures under Mausolus's rule. The mausoleum wasn't just a tomb. It symbolized Mausolus's power and influence, a beacon of his legacy that would withstand the ravages of time. Its design and grandeur set the standard for monumental tombs, influencing funerary architecture for centuries to come. Sadly, the mausoleum could not escape the inevitable decay brought by time and natural disasters. Yet, its influence lives on. The grandeur and beauty of the mausoleum, though now lost, 
continue to inspire and shape our understanding of the past. We now set sail to Rhodes, where the Colossus once stood guard over the harbor. A testament to human ingenuity and artistic prowess, this gargantuan statue was a marvel in the ancient world. Crafted around 280 BC, the Colossus towered over the harbor, its shimmering bronze surface reflecting the sun's rays, a beacon visible for miles. The statue was designed to honor the sun god Helios, a deity deeply revered by the Rhodians. Its creation was a feat of engineering, with each piece forged separately before being hoisted into place, resulting in a figure standing over 100 feet tall, as high as a modern 10-story building. The Colossus was not just a work of art. It was a symbol of victory and resilience, erected to celebrate Rhodes' successful defense against an invading army. Its grandeur was such that it was counted among the seven wonders of the ancient world. This towering statue, though now lost to the ages, continues to captivate with its legend. Finally, our journey concludes in Alexandria, where the Pharos once served as a beacon of hope for sailors. Towering over the Mediterranean Sea, the Pharos of Alexandria was more than a monument. It was a lifesaver, a guide in the dark, and a symbol of human ingenuity. Constructed in the 3rd century BCE, this lighthouse was one of the tallest man-made structures of its time, standing at an estimated height of over 300 feet. It was a marvel of ancient engineering, a structure that combined form and function to create a towering beacon of light. Its role? To guide ships safely into the bustling port of Alexandria, one of the most vibrant trade centers in the ancient world. The Pharos was a symbol of Alexandria's prosperity, its light a beacon drawing merchants from across the Mediterranean. The Pharos, its light now extinguished, continues to illuminate our understanding of ancient maritime navigation. Our journey through the seven wonders of the ancient world now comes to a close. We've traversed time and space, from the enduring Great Pyramid of Giza, the oldest and only surviving wonder, to the lush hanging gardens of Babylon, a testament to Mesopotamian grandeur. We've admired the divine statue of Zeus at Olympia, the embodiment of Olympian grandeur, and the architecturally splendid Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, a beacon of religious devotion. From there, we ventured to the mausoleum at Halicarnassus, the inspiration for all monumental tombs, and the awe-inspiring Colossus of Rhodes, a symbol of protective might. Finally, we found ourselves at the Pharos of Alexandria, the guiding light of the Mediterranean. Each wonder, whether still standing or lost to the sands of time, has left an indelible mark on human history. Though time may have claimed these wonders, their legacy endures, reminding us of the boundless potential of human imagination and craftsmanship.